This is the chapter on spreadsheets, formulae and functions. In class 7, you were introduced to a spreadsheet application, Microsoft Excel. You saw the different features of this program and learned how to open or create a workbook, create or delete worksheets, enter data in them and how to save the workbook. You may have also learned how to add rows, delete rows, add and delete columns and use simple formatting options. You may have even performed some simple calculations on data. This year, we will focus on how you can use formulae and powerful functions to quickly manipulate data and perform calculations. You have used formulae in mathematics. In Excel too, you can use similar formulae, but the way it is written, that is the syntax, is different. A basic rule of writing formulae in Excel is that a formula should always begin with an equal to sign. Now a formula in Excel can have the following kinds of data after the equal to sign. It can have values, both string or numeric, string meaning letters and numeric meaning numbers. It can have cell addresses like A1, B4. The cell address is the intersection of the row and column. It can have functions which are predefined formulae designed to do a particular task. It can have operators like plus, minus, less than, greater than, which tells the system what kind of operation to perform. And lastly, it can have parentheses. Now the parentheses has different functions. It can be used for enclosing arguments to functions or to prioritize operations, just like how in math you first solve what's inside the bracket. Now let's talk a bit more about operators. As I said earlier, operators define what kind of operation is to be carried out. They can be of three types, arithmetic, relational and logical. Your arithmetic operators perform calculations on numeric values, like your plus, minus, multiplication and division symbols. They can only be used with numbers. Relational operators are used to compare two values, like for example, if marks less than 40. Here I am comparing two values, marks and 40, and checking whether marks is less than 40 to see if a student has failed. These kind of operations result in either true or false. Your logical operators compare two or more relational expressions. They are AND, OR and NOT. Say for example, if marks less than 40 and marks greater than 25. That's the statement I have written. So here I am joining two relational expressions. First, I am checking whether the marks is less than 40 to see if the student has failed. And then again, I am uh, comparing the marks to 25 and checking whether the student has at least scored the qualifying marks. So these kind of operations also result in either true or false. Now let us open Excel and see how these actually work. Now this is a sample data showing the marks acquired by some students in different subjects. Now let's use it to understand formulae and functions and perform some calculations on this data. Let's start with concatenation. Now concatenation is the joining of two string values, two or more string values. Now what are strings? Strings are text values like your first name and your last name. Now you can use concatenation to join them. Now let's say I don't want the first name and the last name to be in separate columns. I just require one column with the full name. So I can use concatenation to achieve that. This can be done in two ways. Okay, first let's start by adding a column. So I'm just right clicking on D and clicking on insert which adds a new column. Now I'm going to label it as full name. Now as I said, concatenation can be done in two ways. So let's start first by using the ampersand symbol. So a formula begins with an equal to sign. Now I'm just going to click on Anuj so that the cell address gets automatically inserted into the formula. So I just click on Anuj, left click on Anuj, it puts the cell address there. And then I use the ampersand symbol and then again I click on 
left click on the last name which is Kumar and then I hit enter. So now you have joined the, the first name with the last name. But I want a space in between the first name and the last name. So how do I do that? Now to edit the formula, you can either uh, go to the formula bar or you can double click on the cell and edit it in the cell itself. Right now I'll use the formula bar. So I'll just select the cell. Now to pass the space, to put a space in between the first name and the last name, you'll have to treat the space like a string. Okay. So you have the first name and now you're going to join it with the space. So I'm going to put another ampersand symbol there. Now I cannot enter the space just by hitting the space bar like this. This is not going to work. See, it's going, it's showing you an error. So to do that, first I'll have to put a quotation mark, then put a space which says that now this is a string and then I close the quotation marks. So whatever is in between the quotation marks is treated as a string. So now you have the first name, ampersand, space and again ampersand and then the last name and now you hit enter. So now you have the joined the first name and the last name with a space in between. So this is how you concatenate using the ampersand symbol. You can also achieve the same result by using a function called concatenate. But before we use that, let's go ahead and learn a bit more about functions. Functions are predefined formulae to perform a particular task. Now functions have a particular structure. Now let's see what the different parts of a function are. First you have the equal to sign, then you have the function name, like for uh, example concatenate here in this case. Then you have the opening parenthesis with arguments after that and then you have the closing parenthesis. The structure of a function is called its syntax. Different functions have different syntax. Arguments are the input you give to the function for it to operate on. You can use numbers, text, logical values such as true or false, error values, cell addresses or a range as arguments in a function. Let's look at some examples of functions. Now the today function which shows you the current date does not require any arguments but it still has the parenthesis. You cannot have a function without the parenthesis. The next function mod divides the number which is passed as argument 1 in the function by the second argument which is provided. So whatever argument is specified before that gets divided by the argument which is passed after. In the sum function you can either have a range or you can enter numbers manually for the sum function to calculate. Now let's go back to the excel sheet and use the concatenate function. So the function begins with an equal to sign and then you type in the name of the function. So did you notice as soon as I started typing excel starts suggesting functions which matches the text that you've typed so far. So let's uh, type in a few more characters. So there I have the concatenate function suggested by Excel. So I'm just going to press the tab key and this enters the function in the cell. The opening parenthesis is there by default. So now I just have to put in the arguments. That's my first name, left click, comma, and the second argument, last name. Don't forget the closing parenthesis and then hit enter. So you have joined the first name with the last name using the concatenate function. Now I want a space in between them. So I'll just go to the formula bar. Now instead of passing two arguments, I'll send the space as a third argument in between the first and second. So after the first name, I'll put a comma and then a space in between quotation marks so that the system treats it as a string. So quotation mark, space, and then again quotation mark, and then you hit enter. So now you have joined the first name and the last name, and you also have the space in between. So now you can just copy this formula and paste it here. Did you notice something? The cell address that I passed as arguments in the function 
automatically changed when I copied the function from row 7 to row 6. Here, the cell address is B7 and C7, but when I copied it to row 6, it automatically changed it to B6 and C6. This is known as cell referencing. Cell referencing means how a cell address behaves when a formula is copied from one cell to another. There are three kinds of cell referencing in Microsoft Excel. This is known as relative referencing. Now, in relative referencing, when you copy, copy the formula across rows or columns, the cell address in the formula automatically changes. We'll talk about the other types of cell referencing as we perform further calculations on this worksheet. Now, let's copy the formula to the other cells. Notice as I paste, see the address changes accordingly, became B8 and C8, B9 and C9, and so forth. So this type of referencing is called relative referencing, where the cell address in the function changes when the function is copied from one cell to another. Now, can you see that some of the names are not clearly visible? This is because the column width is lesser than the length of the names. So to adjust the column width, I'm just going to double click here so that the column width automatically gets adjusted to the longest name in the column. So now let us calculate the total marks obtained or acquired by each student. So to do that again, equal to sign first and then the marks in English, left click and it puts the address in the formula plus to add then the next subject plus again. So keep doing that until the last subject and then hit enter. So the formula has calculated the total marks obtained by Anuj Kumar in the five subjects. So this kind of formula is called a basic formula. Now what is a basic formula? Why are we calling it basic? Can you notice that we have used only one operator that is the plus operator. So a formula which only uses one operator is called a basic formula. So I'll now copy the formula all the way down to the last row with the last student. So to do that, first I'll select the cell with the formula, then I'll press and hold the shift key and then use the arrow keys to move to the last row. Now I'm just going to press and hold the control key and then press the D key, which copies the formula all the way down to the last row. So that's it for now. We'll continue with the chapter with more calculations on this sheet in the next video.